Hey, man. Man. Number two. I'm imposter Mario. <laughs> Testing, testing. Awesome. Just testing the mic. Hello, everyone. Thank you all for showing up. Just give us a moment. Our main guest isn't here yet, but he'll be on the way soon. So thank you for your patience. <laughs> yeah. It's Friday. <laughs> You're at MomoCon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I'm not as agile as Mario. <laughs> I could do the Mario. Swing, flips from side to side. <laughs> no. We'll save that for our main guest. He's way better at it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> That's really good. Do you need me to do a... Um, okay, cool.
Okay. All right, so he's on his way. That's great. Awesome news. He's on his way. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> he's coming straight from the Mushroom Kingdom. A warp pipe is going to show up right here, and he's just going to pop out. Yeah. <laughs> How many of you guys are excited for Super Mario Maker 2? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Hello, this is the voice of Mario, Luigi, Waluigi, Wario, Baby Luigi, Baby Mario, and more, Charles Marnet. Wow! First, let me say, hello, it's -a me, Mario! Woohoo! <laughs> Luigi number one, Luigi number one, ho ho! <laughs> Have a rotten day, yahoo! <laughs> oh, wait, I forgot, mommy said say something nice. <laughs> there. Hey, what about me? Hello, Mr. Eyeball Guy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and baby Luigi too. Hello. And baby Mario. Let's go. Woohoo! Hi, everybody. What a fabulous, wonderful surprise. How, it's so great to see you all. And thank you so much for coming. Woohoo! Wow. It's so great. You know, I, I just. I, and hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> nice Hi to, meet to you. see you. Thank you. You know, First, I want to say, just, just, just to say, because I'm here, thank you so much to MomoCon for bringing me out here. It's just so absolutely wonderful of them. So yeah, please, big round of applause. Yay, MomoCon! <laughs> you know, I have, so, I think fan shows and this sort of Comic-Con or whatever you call this, expo, 
It's the greatest thing in the world because everybody gets to come out, meet new people, come with friends. You know, I, I've met people who have gotten married because they've met, you know, they met their Mario or their Princess Peach or what, however it went. I've met people that became friends for life. So it's just such a wonderful environment. And it's a safe and carefully, carefree, lovely place to meet people and hang out with people, share your joys and share your passions and share your fun. And that's what it's all about to me. That's what life is all about to me is, is having fun and having joy and, and expressing that joy and passion. It's what I do in my life, you know, and, and, and that's, that's, that's the great gift to me. But also thank you, of, of course, to, to Nintendo for, you know, it's thanks to them I get to, to play these wonderful characters that I completely love and completely enjoy every day of my life. I, you, people ask, do you ever think as the character or speak as the character? I think like the characters. I speak like they're all day, every day. I dream as Mario. And sometimes I do, you know, you know, I went, when Super Mario Galaxy came out, it was like, uh-oh, because now I started dreaming about flying through space. I used to just fly through over like, over like the beautiful little blue lakes and beautiful little trees and things, you know, and there were little Goombas down there. Watch out. You know, but, that, but it's like I suddenly it's, they've just opened my entire world to joy and happiness and fun and doing this character that I love so much. And also, thank you, and this is really mostly thank you guys, because your joy, your passion, your fun, your, your sense of, uh, of having a great time with the characters is what gives me an opportunity to come out and play and to come out and meet you. And yet your joy, your happiness, it's what I live for. And, and to, to see you being happy and enjoying the games, that, that's really it, you know. My, that completes the circle of my <laughs> joyful life to be feeling the, the, the love and the caring and the, the excitement and the joy that, that you bring to, to this sort of event. So thank you all very much. Thank you. <laughs> I get to do what I absolutely love to do in life which is play Mario, uh, the character, and uh, to, to do the voices and to, to do these jobs. Like when they call me up and say, hey, are you free next week to do a Mario job? I go, yippee! I don't know what it is, but I know I'm going to be so happy. And it, it's, you know, my whole life, I, I've always believed that when you do what you love to do in life, that it brings more love and more joy and more happiness and more fun to you because you're giving happiness out in the small capacity that you have by being happy, you know? I mean, you can't help but, but attract the resonance of more happy people. So that's what I have in my life is so many wonderful, happy people. And it's what I absolutely wish for every one of you that you find out whatever it is that your dream is in life. Find out your joy, your happiness, the fun, what it is that, that, that gives you the joy juice of life, the joy of life, the happiness and the fun, and makes you go, woohoo, you know, and that you do that. You know, you, I was talking to a young man this morning, you still have to pack your own parachute. You know, you got to have a job, you got to have an education. But if your thing is industrial design, if it's driving a truck with, you know, if it's driving the Oscar Mayer uh, uh, weenie car around the world, if that's your dream, then yes, 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 and never say no, and don't accept anybody saying no to you. You know, Einstein was told he could never be a, a smart person. Uh, I was told when I was in high school, we did career tests, and I remember vividly, because I never thought in a million years I could ever possibly be an actor. I just actually, it would never, I would never even think about it, because I could not stand in front of two people and speak without being extremely shy and extremely nervous. But I remember taking this, this sort of like career thing, you know, back in the 1960s. And I did my little career thing, and it said, you know, <laughs> there wasn't a lot of hope here. But it, I remember vividly, it says, cannot be an actor. Uh, you know, not, uh, actor or performer, you know. And I looked at that and I thought, well, who would want to do that anyway? That's terrifying, you know. And then here it is, 230 years later, and I, you know, <laughs> And, I'm, and here I am having the time of my life being an actor. So don't let anybody say, no, you can't have what you want in life. Don't let anybody do that to you because it's your human spirit. It's your joy. And you deserve it. You deserve it just because you are. That's the great thing about, you know, uh, uh, America and our world today. Whatever you can say the, for the politics of it, you know, you still have the right of equality of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. And that's what you deserve 
just because you're born. So have that, please. <laughs> it is truly an honor to have you here at MomoCon, and thank you for sharing your happiness with all of us here Yay, in Georgia. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Believe me, it's my pleasure. <laughs> Now, to start off, I don't know how many people know this, but I want to know how it feels like to be a Guinness World Records title holder. That was so fun. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was, I was in Europe, and I, and, and I got this like, email message. Hey, congratulations that you, are, uh, uh, you, know, you have a Guinness Book of World Records. And I said, what's that? Because <laughs> I remember a Guinness Book of World Records when I was a kid. It was like, you know, old dinosaur fossils and, you know, the oldest of that. And I figured, well, I must be the oldest man in the world. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not. And I said, and I thought, well, this is sweet. And they said, well, we'd love to have you come to, we'd love to have you come to London. And, uh, and I thought, oh, tea, crumpets, food, you know. <laughs> and so I thought, well, I could, go, I could go and do that. That sounds like fun. And, and um and so I, I, I said, sure, you know, and they said, well, we'll fly you up. And I thought, well, the things are getting better all the time. <laughs> and, I, and I went up there, and I, it, was, it was so great because I, they, they said, well, you, you know, you've done the most voices in a video game of anybody at, at 100 with Super Smash Bros. And I'm like, you're kidding me. I know, right? What a great game to, to, to reach a record with. And I thought, well, that's really nice. And, of course, I had 942 cups of tea. <laughs> because, you know, a anybody can make a better cup of tea in England than I can make no matter what I try to do anywhere else in the world. It's just the best cup of tea. And like, well, I'm not very good at making tea. And I'm like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> it's so good. And I, th I think it's the water, the milk, the, the lead in the pipe, something. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Do you, do you take tea, water with your milk with your tea? No, no, I just want lead, thanks. I, I don't... You know, I don't know what it, but it's so great. And I had 942 uh, cups, and I floated down the Thames. But it was like so much fun. But there it was, and I thought, oh, well, we did a little interview, and I thought, oh, this is really fun. And then all of a sudden, I looked, and there was like 19 million people saw the interview. So I, I guess Guinness Book of World Record is, is a big deal. <laughs> I just thought I was old. <laughs> what do you know, you know? So it's fabulous. There it is. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Now, and I also think I have another Guinness Book of World Record, but I have to dispute this because I think I did Mario Teaches Typing in 91, but someone said, no, no, that was 96, the, your version. So I can't tell, but I think I was also in uh, uh, some other Mario game doing just a little bit of a whoop, yep. <laughs> before there was a lot of memory, you know? And, 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 but I can't, I can't trace that stuff, and I don't know, nobody knows that stuff. But then also, I was the first performer in the world to do a real-time animation system. And I, I'm sure you've heard this story before, but um, wait, I have to, I'm sitting on my phone. <laughs> Would you take my phone? And take, take some pictures of the audience. And things. It's so great. And video. I want video and audio because this is really great. You guys are so terrific. I can, I, can I tell you, too, I'm so s astonished because I, I thought, you know, oh, well, you know, it's Friday morning. Maybe there will be 10 people here. And I'm like, <laughs> and I look and I'm in the window and they said, oh, and, my, you know, Steve Bloom's panel is going long. I thought, oh, Steve Bloom's here. Yippee! You know, I love Steve Bloom. And then I, and I looked and I looked in the door. I'm like, and then he said, there, there he is. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> It was a total surprise. How did you get up so early on a Friday morning and get just see, here you are, it's fabulous. I'm so glad you did. But you know, um, what was I going on about? Oh yes, I was the first, yeah, the, and this, this will make sense to you when I do not stop talking. This will make total sense to you. So you know this story of how I got the job of Mario, right? I know I was a, an actor doing what actors do. Has anybody not heard this? Okay, I'll tell you. <laughs> if you've heard it before, I'm sorry you got to hear it again because it's just like, it's kind of like the story of like how life works. I'm saying I always believe in a be deliberate, be conscious, be aware, think, internalize, look at it, it. And then you just fall accidentally through a doorway and it's like whoopee, you know. So that's the story of my life because I was doing theater for 10 years and I went, I started getting tired of doing theater and somebody calls me up. He goes, hey, you want to audition for a corporate video? Sure. What's a corporate video? It's a video that's corporate. <laughs> oh, what do I have to do? Act. Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> so I go and I do this audition. 
and suddenly I'm doing corporate videos, I've got 600 of them for Hewlett Packard and Apple and Amdahl and all these computer co corporations. So my career is like restarted acting. It's like I was never gonna be an actor, you know? And, and, and then all of a sudden somebody, I'm doing a job and somebody goes, oh, you know, I was doing the, the, the painting, the American Gothic painting where the guy with the pitchfork is like this and his wife is like this. That's, that's the pitchfork and that's the, you know? And, and, and the guy, finished, we finished the shoot, and he goes, well, great, do you do uh, voiceover? And I said, sure. <laughs> and I swear to you, inside my brain, I'm like, what's a voiceover? <laughs> but I waited instead of saying, what's a voiceover? Because, you know, at a certain point, you want to hold your dignity as little as you might have, you know, for me. So I, he goes, well, here's the script. And I said, Orchard Supply Hardware, the right item at the right price right now. He goes, great. Here's another $250 or $12.12. And I'm like, I'm a voice actor. Yippee! You know, it's just like that's the way my life has gone. Stumble, 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 stumble. So I'm at the beach doing what actors do, waiting for the phone to ring. Although, and back there, there we had a pager, but I always loved having a, you know, be, the, the cutting edge of technology. Beep, 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 beep. I'm a doctor. No, I'm not. I just, oh, look, it's a friend of mine. Maybe we're going to go have dinner together. So I left the beach. I go to the phone. He goes, hey, you should go crash this audition. It's, 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 it's for this job in Las Vegas. You know, and I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, I would never, ever crash an audition. I'm a professional actor. Can you imagine the humiliation if say, he said, no, you can't read for this? Where should I go? And I went and I crashed this audition I'm, and I walk in the door and literally the cameraman and the, and the director's walking out and I said, hi, can I read for this? And he goes, Ugh. all right, come on in. You're an Italian plumber from Brooklyn, uh, a character named Mario, and you're going to be in this uh, for this uh, company called Nintendo and you're going to... I have a real-time animation system with things glued to your face, so you're going to talk to people all day long as this character, and they'll have a hidden camera, hidden microphone, so they won't see you. They'll see this character, Mario, and you will be doing the voice and seeing them. So, you know, make up a voice, make up a video game, make up anything you want, start talking, and when you don't stop talking, that's your audition. When you don't stop talking. Right? Or don't stop until you're done. So I said to myself, self, I have no idea who Mario is. I have no idea who Nintendo is. I have no idea about video games except wacka, 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 wacka. <laughs> you know, and I can't do that nonstop until I run out of there. Wacka, 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 wacka. So, and I thought, you know, Italian plumber from Brooklyn, you know, it's like, hey, get out of my face, I'm working here, you know, or, hey, what do you want from me, I'm under the sink here, yeah, don't bother me, you know, and the images that go up with that, and I'm like, well, I could do that, but that doesn't sound like fun for eight hours a day, and I don't want to, you know, do that, but I can make, and I had played Gremio in Taming of the Shrew uh, some 500 years before then in the theater, and I thought, that would be really fun to do, yeah, now you should tell you, guy, talk like it is, I'll make it young, I'll make it happy, I, oh, but I don't know anything about video games, but I'll make stuff up about food, which obviously I enjoy. <laughs> so I, you know, I'm sitting there going, okay, self, let's, let's go. And, 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 you know, and I, I heard action. I said, hello, I'm a Mario. Let's make a pizza pie together. You go get some sausage. I get some spaghetti. We put spaghetti and sausage in the, in the pizza. And then I say to the pizza. And if I catch you the pizza, you got to eat the pizza. And then we're going to make another pizza. And then you chase me with the pizza. And if you catch me with the pizza, I'm going to eat the pizza. And I, well, thank you, that's very kind. I thought that was it, right? I thought, okay, I did my little, that, that, but he didn't say stop. And he said, don't stop till you run out of things to say. So the one thing I did was follow directions <laughs> on the label. I mean, it's one of those mattress things. Like, no, do not, you know, do not take this mattress label off or you're gonna go to jail. I did that for once in my life. I just thought, and I didn't stop. I said, and then we're going to make lasagna. And chase you down the lasagna pan. And then we're going to make a tortellini. And I'm making a tortellini. And I'm going to put a mushroom in a tortellini. And you're going to eat the tortellini. And I, you know, and I just kept going until I started making up pastas because I didn't know any more pastas <laughs> to talk about. And I'm just, and I was having so much fun with the voice, but I'm also a brat because if you say don't stop talking, I won't stop talking. So I'm like, you know, I'm going to be a brat, la, 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 la. and then we're going to get some mozzarella crudelli pizza. It's a really great pasta, you know. And I kept going, going until I heard, I heard, I heard, stop talking. 
cut. There's no more tape. Thank you. We'll be in touch. I had talked all the way through the whole tape, but apparently I was the only actor who followed that direction because I walked out the door. I went back to the beach, watched the sunset. He gets on the phone. He calls Nintendo. goes, I found our Mario. I got him. And that was the only tape that he sent up there. So, the, now, thank you very much. The moral of the story is don't ever stop talking. <laughs> right? They worked for me, but I had no idea, and I didn't know who Mario was. I just had fun, and we just had so much fun. The first one, and it was supposed to be a one-off, but I was like, let's do that again. Let's do that again. I want to do that again. I want to do that again. All right, we'll do that again. You know? And so we did it again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and then they redid the systems, and I'm still doing that. And at, at, uh, at Nintendo New York, the store that you can walk in there, Christmas time and uh, uh, summertime for a couple of weeks, and you can talk to Mario live and Luigi too. It's it's just so fabulous. So you know the the answer is always yes. In improvisation, it's always yes. And you know it's I just never say no to myself. Obviously, <laughs> <laughs> I try to say no to myself. It doesn't really work very well. Um, with those live interactions, how do you handle doing impromptu conversations and staying within Nintendo's guidelines? Oh, well, that's a really great question. You know, my thing is there were never any Nintendo guidelines early on. It was just like, you know, go out there and do, and do things. And I started 29 years ago with this character, and I really felt like I love this voice. I love this character so much, and I want him to be a character that doesn't say the word no, that isn't adult, but who respects and loves and is kind to absolutely everybody all the time, no exceptions, you know? And so, and I still am formulating how that all plays out in the different interactions because basically he's a character that just has fun and he's courageous and loyal and trustworthy, all the attributes to a human being that I wish I were and I want to become. So he's my, sort of like my guiding spirit, you know, my, 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 <laughs> somebody said to me, you're my spirit animal. I'm like, <laughs> yippee. <laughs> I don't know what that means exactly, but that's what Mario is to me, is my spirit animal. I'm more Luigi, I'm much more trepidatious and shy, a little bit scared, you know. My brother was my, my older brother, right, is like I had to run faster than him to escape and jump higher and get out of the way because when, when I got him mad, he came for me, you know. <laughs> I'm just kidding, we had a great relationship in, in, in growing up. But you know, it's sort of like, uh, uh, it, but I was more trepidatious. He was the type that if you wanted to go outside, he'd just go straight out the door, whether there was a door open or not, you know, and, and I'd be going, ah, 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 yeah, I don't think we should go out there, you know. So, so but, uh, but I just fell in love with the characters and, and, and never stopped. And so the guidelines to me are, are just things that are in my own spirit of, you know, always be loving, caring, trustworthy, honest, you know, joyful, because that's what the character is, and I would never betray that or any character. May you explain to us one of your favorite interactions with Shigeru Miyamoto, the creator oh, of Super Mario Brothers? Oh, sure. You know, he's the most amazingly wonderful man. I will tell you, I, you know, he, when he walks by the, the, the monitor and I see him at, at a show, I say, Papa! <laughs> 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 because he is, he's, he's my papa, you know? And it's so sweet because then the, the media's like, they take pictures of him, you know? And he's just the nicest man. When I first met him, we were, you know, I had, I, you know, I'd seen him through my little TV monitor and I've got all this stuff glued to my face and, you know, supercomputer working and overheating and trying to keep things cooled with na liquid uh, nitrogen and stuff, you know? <laughs> Seriously, we had a, an, uh, an Onyx computer like the size of one of these, these panels here and about that high, and it would overheat from crunching the numbers. Now I have a couple of Apple laptops and it does all the, everything right there, you know, it's just uh, without glued to the face, it's just by sound. But, you know, I, I was in the lobby of the hotel and I, I looked over and I saw him and I thought, that looks just like Mr. Miyamoto. I was like, is it, because, but he's bigger, because he's a little small, you know. But, so I, I walked up and I said, hello. He goes, oh, hello. You know, and he knew me and I knew him. And we had the most delightful conversation. He's just the nicest person in the world. And you know, he's brought so much joy and so much happiness and so much fun to so many people. And he's, he's, he's just a normal, very wonderful person, you know. I aspire to be more like him, too. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, I have a real question for you. Okay. Now. Why do you think Mario likes to sacrifice Yoshi to make it to the other side of the level? Ah. <laughs> oh. That's too deep philosophical for me. I, I don't know, but I can't even wait. One thing, Yoshi always comes back. Oh. <laughs> he always comes back. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> All right. Here's a more philosophical question for you. Yes. If you could pick one Mario power-up for yourself. You know, Tanuki suit. suit. Oh. <laughs> Every time. I just think it's the cutest thing in the world. You know, it's like, it's like you know, I see that little gold leaf coming. I'm like, Tanuki. It just makes me happy, you know? Although I like that. I like that, you know, it's not really a tradition of a power-up, but the penguin suit. I enjoy the penguin suit a lot. Because I always want sushi after that one. <laughs> I, do, I love sushi. Even, I, you know, I just, it's so great, you know? And even talking about that, now I know tonight I'm going to want sushi. <laughs> I just, I have to mention it. But I love that one. I just, I love the flying. Anything flying, you know, is, is really great. I don't really need a fire flower, although sometimes in traffic it certainly would be. <laughs> and everywhere you go in the world, there's traffic, you know. Do you ever feel like you're in a Mario Kart game? <laughs> <laughs> I do, kind of, you know. I watch out for bananas, you know. <laughs> it's so funny. I do, I do, I do. Li life is like a Mario Kart game. Watch out for bananas. <laughs> now that's going to go viral, right? It's like, watch out for bananas. I like bananas. But what, 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 you know, the, the, the anti-banana society will be calling me up. How dare you? <laughs> Here at Momocom first. Yes, that's right. <laughs> no, I, you know, li li but life is like, it, it's a gift, you know. It's, it, 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 it's a game and it's a gift because I, I grew up taking things so seriously. And then I realized that the, the real joy is, is in the, it's in the joy. It's in the fun. It's in the love. You know, um, I'm going to see my cousin tonight. And I remember his dad was um, a, a military man, Green Beret, you know, and, you know, very serious FBI investigator and, you know, those things. You know, and I remember so vividly, you know, because I always thought, you know, he's very serious. He said to me, you know, the only thing that really matters in life is the people you love and the people that love you. And I went, ah, that still holds with me so true that you know the truth in life is, is, is the people you love and the people that love you. That's, that's everything, you know. It really, really, truly is. But then with that is joy and happiness and fun, you know. That's why I always wish that for everybody is having fun, having joy, having love in your life and loving yourself. Because it really starts with loving yourself, you know. If you treat yourself the way you treat your very best friend, then you can become your very best friend. But if you treat yourself like junk, like, like dirt, like most of us do, with that negative voice, you know, oh, you're too stupid, you're ugly, you're this, you're that, you're this, and it's still, I mean, I look at myself in the mirror and I go, oh, gosh, I'm so fat, you know. And then I go, wait a minute, you wouldn't say that to somebody, a friend of yours who's, who's, who's large. You'd say, no, no, you're looking good, you know. But you say it to yourself. So I think one of the most important things in every artist's life, and artists are so lucky because we all get to look into ourselves as to, particularly actors, you know, why we do the things we do in life, who we are, the choices we make, because that's what you study when you study a character. Why does my character say this? And what does it mean, you know? The, the train is coming can mean a million things. It can have, you know, the, tra the train is coming. That, that's great because grandmother's on the train, or the train is coming, and on it is death, you know? But it's the same words but it can have completely different meaning. So, you know, we, uh, in ourselves, like you, you learn these things and that's how you become an actor. So why does my character say this? What does he mean? What's the history behind it? And we can do the same things with ourselves, looking at ourselves. Why do I get angry when my mom says this? Or why do I do that? Why, why do I do this? And looking and exploring yourself with compassion and joy and fun and a sense of self-worth and self-love gives you the opportunity to then look at the world uh, better too. It's, it's so easy to look at our world, reading newspapers and hearing certain people that are very public figures speaking, you can think the worst things about humanity. But I believe it's the exact opposite. I believe the best things in humanity. People are, are so great because we have the capacity to love, because we have the capacity to give, to care. We know we are 
have an end to this life. And that awareness gives us the opportunity to make every moment of this count or not. You know, but it is our freedom that we have. And, and if we exercise that freedom with ourselves to joy and love, love ourselves, then we have much more power in our world to share that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you, you know, so much. life does get better. There, there, we we're at a time in our, in, our, in our country that, you know, it feels like there's a, so much blaming and so much anger and so much denigration of people. Let me just say, everybody deserves love. Everybody is equal. Everybody deserves all the best things in life. And we need to hold on to that throughout, through all that we do. And also take responsibility and, and get out there and vote. Because really, you know, we, 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 we are not powerless, you know, and, and if things don't go the way we want when they vote, we can still be together as human beings, respectfully caring with, with love in our hearts for each other and our, and our, our own worlds. I think. Thank you. Thank you. And, and thank you for allowing me to say that. I do I really appreciate that. Thank you. Well, thank you for your encouragement and wisdom. <laughs> Mario's wisdom. Well, if you, get, if you get this old, you better have some wisdom. <laughs> um, I am curious if you have ever watched the Super Mario Brothers Super Show before. <laughs> I did see a couple of episodes of that. That's so fun, and I look on it on YouTube every once in a while. It's just like, it's just so cute, you know? Have you ever done the Mario before? No, I haven't. I've never done Mario. I've, never done Mario. I've seen it, but it's been, been probably 20 years since I saw it. No, but I, I did autograph somebody said, you know, welcome to the Mario, Super Mario Super Show. Yeah, that was so cute, yeah. What did you think of the live-action Super Mario Brothers movie that came out in 1993? Have you seen it before? <laughs> I, I said something very forbidden here. <laughs> they, they made a movie? <laughs> well, I did see that. Yes, I did. How about that sports team, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I did see that movie, and I've read so many things about it afterwards. More information keeps coming out about what a terrible time they had on the set. New scripts every day. Actors would come in with their lines memorized, and they'd be like, oh, no, we're not doing that script. We're doing another one. What? You know? They didn't have an ending. They didn't have it edited. They didn't have anything by the, by the time they finished the, the, the shoot, and there was more. <laughs> All right. Before yes. we open up to fan oh, yes. Q&A. Sorry, sorry. I talk too much. Oh, I'm no. Good. I know. I give. I, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. We have, I have one more question for you. Sure. And um, it's about your path on becoming an actor. You mentioned before that you never saw yourself becoming an actor, that you had incredible shyness when you were younger. How did you overcome that shyness to pursue your passion? First of all, let me say I am a brat. I, I was at UC Berkeley studying political science with a theory emphasis intending to go into law and then go overseas to live in London or Paris uh, working in an embassy or something like that. And I, I loved this professor. He was an English uh, man in, at UC Berkeley. And he, he had, you know, that we studied Hobbes, Locke, Rousseau, Voltaire, and the, the study of the nature of man. And the theory was everybody has a theory of the nature of mankind. Are we good, you know, uh, uh, like uh, Locke says, good, and we just need laws to, to, uh, to keep the, the, the bad out? Or are we, like Hobbes said, you know, uh, we're rotten and we you know, have a rotten day, you know? Are, are we, you you know, is, it, is the life of man solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short in nature? Or is, it, is there just a social contract where we give our right to govern us to a government? And I thought, you know, it, it, our final exam was, what is the nature of man according to the, 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 the philosophers we studied this year? Question A, uh, 1A. 1B was, what is your opinion on the nature of man based on what you know? And I, I mean, I had the, the greatest time with that question. It was the first time anybody ever asked me to think in my whole academic <laughs> life, you know, or, or asked me what I thought instead of like, now I say in my book on page 42, you know, this, this, what are you, you know, what, what, what exactly did I mean? You know, it's like, you know, so 
I spent uh, like 30 minutes writing as fast as I could. You know, the Nature Man according to Locke, uh, Hobbes, so, Voltaire, uh, uh, and then I spent two and a half hours writing what I thought, you know, was the nature of man because it was the first time that I got to do that. And I said, okay, every class is going to be with this guy. My thesis is going to be with this guy. My graduate's going to be work with this guy. And then I'll do law afterwards. Then it's all going to be this guy. And I went back for my final, like, two quarters and I couldn't get him for a single class. So being the academic that I was, I quit. <laughs> and if I can't have who I want, I quit. So I walked out of Souther Gates, and I thought, oh, I'll go back, you know, in six months when I can get, you know, next year started, and I'll finish up my, my graduate work. And then I... <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> it's okay, bye. Have fun. Thanks for coming. Oh, they were trying to be so quiet and so cute. And the little girl who's about that tall was ducking. <laughs> so cute. So, so uh, I, I quit. And a friend of mine said, oh, Charles, if you're quitting, why don't you come and take an acting class from me? It was Les Abbott. Uh, who was Adrian Barbo's uh, training teacher in, in, in Manhattan back many, many years ago. And I said, oh, Les, you know, that's so nice, but there's no way I could ever stand in front of people. I, I'm way too shy. You know that. I mean, thank you, but I, I couldn't. He goes, well, I'll tell you what. What else are you going to do? <laughs> and I thought to myself, find a job. <laughs> ah! uh, well, what do I have to do in this acting class? He goes, well, listen, why don't you come? We'll go to the cafeteria. There's a student chef program. We'll have a nice lunch together, and then we'll go to my acting class. You don't have to do anything if you don't want to. Just come in and have fun. And I thought, well, this is great. I'll come in and, and I'll eat. <laughs> there is a thread through my life here. I mean, if something has a Michelin star, I don't care if it's a tire. I'll eat it. <laughs> you know? And, I, and so I said, food? Uh, okay, okay, I, maybe I could come. We got food. I'll get food. So I would go and we'd have this incredible lunch and wonderful conversation about life, opera, theater. The, he was a World War II veteran and, uh, you know, just, just about life. And then we'd go to the acting class and we had this a monologue. He said, well, you should learn a monologue. I said, okay, I'll learn a monologue. You know, my name is, I died a terrible death in a fire. Da, 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 da. You know, so I, you know, I learned my little monologue and we watched and I sat there and watching everybody else's monologue and said, I don't have to do it. I don't have to do it. Uh oh, wait a minute. What if I have to do it? What if he calls on me? Oh my gosh, and I started doing my I'm in the room with two other people shrink and disappear routine and I was somewhere hiding behind a chair in the back and I heard, well Charles, you're up. And I mean, I was so terrified that, I, you know that, <laughs> that was me We're in that moment. I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my God. <laughs> I was shaking so terribly. I thought, oh my gosh, I could die right now. And that was my inner monologue of the character. You're going to die, you're going to die. And I got up there. And I'm like, hi, my name is Joe. I died a terrible death in the fire in the warehouse. And I died. You know, and I'm doing that. And I notice that my right foot is shaking like this. I mean, it was like, bum, 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 on the ground, you know. And I'm like, and I heard this voice, put your weight on that foot. And I put my weight on that foot. And then this one starts going. And I'm like, I died a terrible death. Ah. And then, Spread your legs evenly and put your weight evenly. And I did like this. And then they're both going like this. I'm like, ah. <laughs> my subject says, you're going to die, you're going to die. And I think that people are hearing like, <laughs> and I keep going. And I reach the end. I have no idea how I reached the end. I thought I was going to die for sure. I get to the end and I hear, and I'm like, boom, boom, boom. And that wasn't my heart. That was the people applauding. But my heart was going, you know, like this. And, and you know, now it's time for criticism, you know, because, of course, you criticize everybody. And, 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 uh, and, 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 and my criticism was, okay, how is it that you were the only person in the class that wasn't nervous? <laughs> to which I said, what? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like so. And I thought, well, oh, boy, that's acting. You came back. Hooray. Hi. Hi. Thanks for coming back. Yippee. So, so I, they're back, everybody. Yay. Yay. So, so, so I, I, you know, that gave me enough inspiration to do another monologue, then a scene. And then I, I went to audition 
for the, uh, uh, the school play because I was starting to get, get full of myself and I wanted to audition for Oberon. The king of the fairies, there lies Titania sometime of the night. You know, and I thought, oh, that's good because my natural speaking voice is actually low. This, what you hear now, is kind of like me to be able to be heard because my speaking voice is actually here. But you can't really hear me if I'm, you know. So I, I, I talk like this. So I thought, this is perfect for me. And I went and auditioned, and you know, school play, 450 seat theater, 500 seat theater, and you watch everybody else audition. And I went and I did my audition. I'm like, I'm the best. I did the best. I did the best. I did the best. I call Les, hey, Les, I did a really good job. I think I'm going to get Oberon. I think I'm going to get Oberon. He goes, don't count your chickens before they hatch, Charles. I'm like, no, 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 I was really good because I watched everybody else. And I was really, really good, really good. And I think I'm going to, and you know, and he is, yeah, okay, okay. So I, I go to the casting wall the next day where you're, you know, this is not, and I'm like, I'm going to be Oberon. Nah, 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 nah. I look and I, I wasn't Oberon. Aww. I, I, aww. And I wasn't anybody in the play. I didn't get to move the furniture when the lights went out in the play. And that wonderful thing called failure was why I became an actor. Because it pissed me off. <laughs> it, it pissed me off. I said, I was the best. I know I was the best. I know it, 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 I know it. <laughs> Just to be an adult about it. So I started studying acting, which I had never done before. I never really studied before that, but it became a passion. And I did speech tournaments. We won the first place in the California State and the national championships. And I kept doing auditions. I kept you know, working, 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 actually not doing auditions because we were just doing scene classes, but really trying to understand, reading Stanislavski, reading about the method and things like that. And, and, and then Berkeley Repertory Theater, on the same casting board where I didn't get anything, put a little note, you know, Berkeley Repertory Theater, coming out and you know it's a professional theater company and I thought to myself self why not audition and I went and auditioned and it was just as the play was closing there uh, and 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 I I so I I used my monologue from Oberon against the guys that actually played Oberon <laughs> and I got it And so I became an apprentice there, and I went to the acting studio, uh, the, the drama studio of London in London. Sir John Gielgud was our patron. Sir John Gielgud, uh, say the words and don't run into the furniture. You know, uh, you know that's, that's, that was his interpretation of acting. Say the words and don't run into the furniture. But he was our patron saint, so we loved him. You know? And then I studied there, and I, I just boom, 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 boom. And that, that's, just, uh, that just, that's how it happened. And I, I want to tell you one more story, because, of course, I don't stop talking. I hope we'll have time, I, I promise. Uh, so there was a guy in my acting class who had a terrible stutter, you know? And of course, when you're, you know, you're in college area, you take acting classes because you want to overcome shyness. That's, that's natural and normal, you know? And, and I asked him, I said, have you always had a stutter? And he said, you know, no, on my 21st birthday, I went to Las Vegas and, you know, uh, there was a comedian there. My friends all took me. We were at dinner. And all of a sudden, the lights went on on the table. A spotlight came on. He said, hey, it's somebody's birthday here. Stand up, you know. And he's, you know, his name was uh, launched to everybody. And there's like, you know, a thousand people in this crowd. It's a big Las Vegas crowd. He goes, look at that ugly piece of junk. Look at that ugly kid. You know, can you believe it? Look at that pimply face. And he said he kept insulting me. And every time, but that's what this, that's what this comedian shtick was. He kept insulting me, but... Every time he would do it, people would laugh more and more and more. He goes, I could hear my heartbeat. I could hear myself sweat. I didn't know what to do. I was so mortified. You know, look at that pimply face. You know, oh, you're so fat. Look at that. You should, your mom should have thrown you back when she had a job. You know, and over and over and over and over again. And he said, and I woke up the next morning with a stutter, and I've had it ever since. And I believe in life lessons, you know. And, and, and it's like, to me, that told me, Never be hurtful in your comedy because it's easy to make someone laugh when it's at somebody else's expense. It's, it's, but it's, it hurts people or it has the potential to. Whereas if the comedy always comes back, like Wario and Waluigi, the comedy always coming back on them, you know, you know it always comes back, their, their anger, their self-pity, whatever it is. So that changed my life and that is a piece of a, the real genesis of why I chose to make Mario 
the way he is, of, of never hurtful, always kind, always considerate, always trusting, always respectful, and always responsible to everybody. And that's what, what I decided in that moment and through my life, that that's the person that I want to be. So, but it's just an interesting thing. It's a, life is, is long, and, but it's so short. But if you take lessons from everything you do in life, you, you really can work on being a better person. I, I certainly try to do, and, I, and I've got a long way to go, but at least I'm conscious, try, try to be as much as I can, though I stumble through life ridiculously. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now I promise, I, I, we will have time for questions and answers. That's right. We can line up right now. We have time for a few questions. A few. I'm so sorry. Oh. <laughs> Yippee! <laughs> Let that let, let, like let, a, let that let the little there. Mario in there too. There's a little Mario. Let him come up too, okay, you guys. Let him come in. Come bring him up close to the front of the line. I was I was also by the way. Yeah, there he is. Come on up to the towards the front. Oh. You know um, uh uh, uh yeah. The, and there's another one. The the, the little one. The, yeah, right there, right there. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. The little one. Yeah, you come up towards the front too. You guys be the first two, okay. I was, I was, I, you know, thank you. Yeah, you come right up there. You're going to be, a, so I was the shortest person in my class until I was 16. I was five foot four or five feet two inches tall. Or, no, I was four foot nine inches tall. And then in two years, I became the tallest person in my school. So I know what it's like not to be the tallest person. Hi. What's your favorite Mario character? What's my favorite Mario character? That's a great question. Yippee! It's -a me, Mario. <laughs> I love Mario. I love him because he's the man that I would love to be. Who's your favorite? Uh, Mario. <laughs> Mario? Whoopee! Way to go, bro. Thank you very much, and thank you for that question. Great shirt, too. Hi there. Hello. Um, my question is, do you play your own games often? If so, what's your favorite? Yes, and not well. <laughs> you know, I was in Kentucky. I was playing Odyssey, and I was in Kentucky, and I kept, you know, I kept, well, two things. I, when, I'm, when I'm playing on a plane, you know that little snowball, boom, 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 where you got to beat the snowball around that old track? I couldn't win. I couldn't win. I couldn't win. I'm like, come on. Come on. Get it. I thought, I've reached the end of my total capacity, and all of a sudden, I got through there just because I made some silly thing that I decided, and I went, woohoo! <laughs> I was on the plane. Flight attendant, excuse me, sir, are you okay? Or did you just say, woo-hoo? You know. <laughs> so, but, uh, but, but there, there was another one there, too. I, oh, and I was, uh, I was in Kentucky, and a nine-year-old, I reached reach past that point, and I, there was a nine-year-old that was uh, the, the manager's son, and, I, and I'm sitting there stuck at another level, and I said, fix it. And he took it, and he went like 940 levels beyond where I will ever see. But I got, the, I got to see it, though. That was nice. Yes, I do. Not very well. Super Mario Odyssey, Mario 64, uh, Mario Sunshine. I love that game. That, <laughs> isn't that a game? That was the first time I got to really see what happens later on because the journalists would come into my hotel in Australia, and they'd play, because everybody loves Mario. They'd play, and I'd push the memory wand in there and go, save. <laughs> you know? So I got to record these things, and I got to actually play them. It was great. Not very well. What's your favorite? Um, Super Mario Galaxy or Super Mario 64? 64. Oh, thank you very much. Thank classic. you. Hi. So uh, my question is, uh, Super Mario Odyssey, what is your favorite thing about it? What is your favorite thing overall about the game? I, I love your hat, by the way. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I love sandbox games because I'm not skilled, you know, although I can do, I, you know, Super Mario 3D World, I love the, the two-dimensional sort of like where you got to go forward. But, you know, I love the sandboxes. I, the, when I walked in the studio and I saw Cappy, I went, oh my gosh, this game is the greatest. It's going to be so much fun. And I was right. It, you know, I just, I just love that. I love the joyfulness, the fun, the playfulness, the swapping things around, the hat, the, everything, of being the dinosaur. I, you know, I actually like, you know, he throws it on top of that tree and then becomes the tree and bounces the tree. I love that. I don't know why. It's like, oh, I'm a tree, you know? It's the greatest. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that question. I'll talk fast, so bear with me. Okay, I was born in 83, though I don't look it. As a kid, I remember jumping 
or trying to jump over pitfalls, swinging my arms from side to side as yeah. if that was going to help. I even put quarters in the Mario Brothers arcade at convenience store in the 80s yeah, yeah, to yeah, add yeah. more time just to play. All the way to Mario 3, which I think was one of the best in the series moving forward. I watched every episode of Super Mario Brothers Super Show and watched one of the greatest movies, Jurassic Park, at the time over the Super Mario Brothers movie. What, <laughs> so my question is, what is your one favorite concept game or anything from the entire series? My one favorite concept of the, that's a great question. You know, it, that's a really hard one though too because to me it's, it's, it's the joy, it's, it's the love and joy and happiness that is somehow miraculously uh, goes through the TV screen or the, through the game console and into the person. I, that to me, the, the magic and the mystery of that is to me my favorite thing of all. That okay. that, that joy is just, is just it, uh, is it transmutable, transform? Yeah, it just, it moves. It moves. Yeah, I create characters myself, and, so. Yeah, I, yeah, okay, I love that. that's great. I love that aspect of bringing a character to life, you know, and yeah. giving them a personality. Yeah, and the sweetness of humanity to suspend disbelief and be in that moment with that character in that world is just Gorgeous. It's why we should always remember to be children. Thank you, Kermit. Yeah, thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, I apologize for this. This is a stupid question. and you Not, probably Nothing gotten, stupid. Okay, well, you've probably gotten questions like this before. So, um, if Waluigi were to open a bridal boutique, um, <laughs> how would he advertise it, do you think? Purple! <laughs> <laughs> We put the wah in wedding. Wah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's not for social media. Please don't put things like that on social media. Okay. Please, if you videotape that, because you're not supposed to videotape at all, but if you're videotaping, keep that to, to yourself, because of course, please. That's just, that's just for this audience, this crowd. All right, so on the topic of Waluigi, and I'm surprised nobody else asked this, Waluigi and Smash. What do you think about that? Should he be included or? You know, I, I'm, I'm, this is a place where I, you know, I just don't, I, they call me up, they say, come and play in our sandbox, we got new toys, and I'm like, yippee! I'm so happy no matter what, but I always have a feeling that Waluigi will have his day in the sun. <laughs> Man. All right, thank you. Thank you. I actually have ah. two questions. I saw a YouTube video of you doing something called the Dracula Wrap. Do you still remember that? Oh gosh, yes. With Tam Communications, they're they're still in business in uh, in Santa Cruz, California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My name is Simbad. I'm straight up the block. My abilities can't be knocked. Yeah, I remember that. And I can't. But my name is Dracula. I can't, I can't remember the, 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 the. Yeah, I do remember. <laughs> Hey, yeah, Grandpa, I remember. Yes, that was so totally fun. And my second question is, do you want to hear my impression of Yoshi? Yes, I do. <laughs> Yay, very nice. Thank nice. you. Nice. We only have five minutes left. Oh, gosh, five uh, minutes. Okay, either, gonna... Can you say wahoo? Are you serious? Can yeah, you say wahoo? I talk too much. Wahoo! <laughs> That's all I, I think I talk Thanks. too much. I talk too much. I should... Hi. Hi. Um, what advice would you have for aspiring voice actors? Go to IWantToBeAVoiceActor.com. <laughs> D. Bradley Baker has worked out the way to study for years and market yourself and learn and grow and develop as an actor. I want to be, remember, what do I want to be? A voice actor. I want to be a voiceactor.com. D. Bradley Baker, a brilliant actor, too. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Mr. Martinet, Hi. after decades of Mario and gaming in general, you finally became playable in Runner 3 last yes, year. Yes, I did. Who was behind it and what was the experience like? Gosh, you know, that's so funny. I love, I love the Bit Trip Runner series. They are so great. That game did not sell as well as I had, we had all hoped to do. And they're a one game company, so that really stressed the company. So if you see that game, buy that game. You know, it's a, it was just great fun. We, we just did the, the first version, the second version. Absolutely wonderful, loving, marvelous country, also, uh, company also in California. And I, I'm sorry, my brain is, is, sl is, sl is, sl is slipping right now on, on who it was, but Alex was my friend there. And it just, just a fabulous, fun game and fun people. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hi. Um, have you ever watched the cutscenes for Hotel Mario? 
You know, I haven't actually. I, I haven't. I, I need to. I need to get on my Googles. Wow. Um, thanks for the answer. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry. I, I better watch that for the next time. Uh, hi. Uh, hi, Charles. Can I call you Charles? Nice costume, by the way. I love. Uh, thank oh, you thank for everybody you. <laughs> cosplays. Everybody doesn't, but but I love cosplay. It's so great. Um, what was your favorite and least favorite voice acting experience doing Mario and all the Mario characters? I have loved absolutely every single Mario experience I've ever done. <laughs> Everything from signing a bunch of boys' uh, faces, uh, foreheads <laughs> in Australia, to doing the voice in the studio, to meeting people at, at conventions. Every single experience has just been fabulous. Well, then what would you say is your least favorite voice acting experience aside from Mario? Pardon me? What was your least fa favorite voice acting experience? Like the worst? I don't, I don't, I, you know, it's like, it's like come play in a sandbox with your, with some fun toys. Every one has been fun for me. There are some I, some I haven't been good at, you know. They're, 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 I look back at some of the commercial, because I wanted to be a commercial actor because there was, there was great money in it and I was, you know, it's before Mario and I'm like, I want to be a commercial actor. And I, I just don't have the believability to say, you know, Use the Oral-B toothbrush, you know? <laughs> People go, nah, that's fake, you know? And they're right. Uh, thank thank you. you. I'm afraid this one will have to be our last oh. question. Luigi number one, ho ho! Hi, Luigi! Wowie! Wowie. <laughs> um, so, I wanted to ask you, have you been, do you know anything about the new Mario, CGI Mario movie coming out in 2020 yet? Wow. Yeah, I, I, not a thing. <laughs> you know, it's all a big secret. I, I, I'm so excited that the movie's gonna happen. I'm excited about the theme parks happening too. You know, I, I'm just, I think it's 2022. Um, uh, that, that the movie will come out, and I'm just, I hope I get to play the part, of course, because I mean, you know, what, what a joy, what a culmination of a, a beautiful life, you know. Wait, one more question. Sure. One last question. If you could spend a full 24 hours in the Mario universe, what would you spend the day doing? Wow, that's a great question. I would eat with Mario, and then I would go fly with Mario, and run around with Mario, and ride Yoshi, and hang out with Luigi, and, 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 and all the guys, and, and I want to meet, and, the, and okay, that's right, and I would save the princess. <laughs> what would you do? Would you do the same thing? Um. Well, I probably stuffed my face with mushrooms first. Mushrooms! Yippee! Thank you. That was a great question. Thank you. Thank Louis, you. Number uh, one. Oh, oh. Okay, a couple more. Couple more, couple more little ones. Couple more little ones, real fast. My question is that how well do you know your characters? How well do I know them? Very much as though they're me. <laughs> as well as I know myself. Because the characters come from my little heart, my, my fear, my trepidation, my self-pity, my anger, my joy, and just absolute love for people. I have to, have, uh, have to invest the truth of that in every character that I do. That's a lovely question. Thank you. Thank Where you. can people find you afterwards? Oh, oh, after this, I'm going to go from here and have just one minute in the green room, get a cup of tea, and then I'm going to go to my autograph table, which is down... Something row, celebrity row? Hop, happy row? Walk of fame, on the walk of fame. And you guys, you know, I'm gonna be there all day today, all day tomorrow, and all day the next day. Please feel free to come by. You don't have to have money to do it, you know, but we're gonna do, we do autographs and we do um, photographs and, and uh, messages and things like that. And you can ask me questions there, too. Awesome, so give thank it up you for Mario. And thank you very much for playing my game. Oh, wait, 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 before you go, before you go, before you go in, I have one request. I have a request. I want, I want everybody to go, woohoo! Okay, ready? Okay, ready? Okay, ready? Okay, wait, ready? Ready? Oh, wow, I can't see anything. Cause it's, uh, uh, it's, it's just gonna be light. Oh, there you go, the lights are going down. Oh, there you go, yeah. yeah. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Wow. That's MomoCon, thank you everybody. Thank you, Charles Marinet.
We really appreciate you coming out to Georgia to talk with us. Thank you so much. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs>